How's it going everybody? Mr. Hem here. So in this video, I'd like to go through controlling the mouse in Windows with visualbasics.net. Now this has um, been requested by a student of mine. So I guess we'll just get started. All right, so the contents is um, to do this, to control the mouse. So you got your mouse cursor, you wanna you know, programmatically control where it goes and what it clicks and find out you know where it is. Uh, you need to import the systems that run dot in uh, in uh, interrupt services, and um, this particular library will allow us to access the user thirty two dot dll. And these are the methods that we'll be having a look at. So these three methods: set cursor position, get cursor position, and mouse event. And of course, if you're you know playing around with the mouse. You want to be able to control it, uh, how often it may click or how often it moves, and you might want to wait for it to do certain things. So we'll have to look at timers and and um, and uh, time control as well. All right, so let's get right into it. So what I've done is I've created a um, a project called Mouse Clicker. It's just a Windows form project, and I'm. Um, I'm thinking about making sure that I can control the mouse with some kind of button inputs and you know this can be our little interface where we can control certain settings you can set that up for yourself but for now I'm just going to put in a button call, call it uh, I'll just call it start mouse procedure and I'll just make I'll just let the mouse do something so start mouse uh, mouse proceed so you can't quite see there, but that's that. All right, start mouse procedure. I'm going to double click into it, and um, oh, I didn't I didn't change the button name. Mm, I should do that. Mm. Uh, start mouse. I'll just, start, I'll just call it start mouse. And on the side here, I'll just click rename, so things will there won't be any conflicts. All right, so to start with, to control the mouse. Uh, I think the best way to do it is to hook into the Windows 30 uh, window uh, user 32.dll and to do that from Visual Basic you'll need to write a, a little declaration at the top that tells the um, tells Visual Basics that you're accessing a particular method from a library that's in Windows so this library is in Windows and what we do is we'll go we'll do it this way this Visual Basics way we'll go public declared auto function uh, it could be a function, could be a subroutine. Uh, for this particular one, I want set cursor position. Uh, so it's in the library. It's in the library user thirty two, and this is Windows specific. All right. So you know, depending on what platform you're on, you'd have to find out where your methods are that does these, that controls these, and the the arguments for this is two integers x and y and it and it will return a long that we won't use but we'll just put that in there anyway uh, what i'll do is i'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, so that's kind of the. I'll probably yeah. So that's 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 um, set mouse cursor, and and that's that's pretty much it. That that uh. Well, uh, hold on. I I forgot to um. That's pretty much the actual function. But what I've forgotten is to, you know, you want to forget to import, import the system dot. Runtime. So this so I can actually use this function that's extracted from this dynamic link library. Right, so so you'll need this, else you won't be able to extract this particular method from this particular library and DLL is dynamic link library, right? And and that's pretty much it. Uh, what I could do at this point is I when I click on the button, I can get the mouse to move to a position. So I, I can I can do that. I, I I can get it to move to a position. So what what we'll, we'll, we'll use it right now. We'll go set cursor position, and let's set it to um, the position of the form. So I'll, I'll test it by moving my mouse cursor outside of the form and then clicking into the form and then it will click into the form. 
Oh, at least to the corner of it, you know. So um, it should jump to the corner. It should jump over here, right? It's so silly me. It should be location.x. Too much talking. I'm getting confused. But anyway, we'll do. It. We'll get that sorted. So and also over here, it's location dot y. Uh, that should go to the corner of the, the little kind of the top corner of the form there. There you go. So it's at the top corner of the form there. So you just jump there. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can control the position of your mouse. Uh, what if you wanted to know where your mouse is? You could use the um, another function inside this library, get cursor position, and the inputs uh, get cursor position. Inputs are uh, pretty much, uh, and I don't know how many overloads there are in here. But I, I'm only familiar with this one, which is um, we're going to use by ref because by ref I need to grab the position. This is an, a grab the position from this function, whereas I use by val here because I, I just put in. I'm putting in. I'm giving the function the input, uh, the uh, parameters. So this is by ref. It needs to be by ref. And what we'll do is we'll just go p as point. So we're going to grab the point of the cursor position. And again, this thing returns a long that we're not going to use. All right, so so that's that. So what I could do is um, instead of setting my mouse cursor to some position, I can kind of register what my mouse cursor is. So I can go message message box dot show get. Actually, because I need uh, I need I need a place to store it, so I need some place to store this as point. Right, so I need, I need, you know, I need a memory location to store the point that will get. I need to execute the get cursor, and then the the information will go into here, and then I'll, I'll print that off. I'll print that off. So I'll print it off as p dot x to string, and then put a, a comma in p dot y to string. All right, so uh, that should that should um, don't need these in this language, but I get I get I get used to it, you know. That should be good there. So uh, so over here, we'll just click, and there's a position of the mouse. So this is my second screen. That's why the width is so you know I got a, I got a screen on this side, right? But yeah, that's the position of mouse. So you can look at the position of mouse, move it. So this is moving it. This is getting the position. Um, what else can we do? So we can simulate clicks. So to simulate a click, there's uh, another method called mouse event. And this is pretty much the, the way we just grab certain... Um, now the key with these these things, all of these names are unique. That's, ex that's how they're stored inside this dynamic link. So if you stuff up any of these names, it won't recognize it. And of course, if you stuff up this, it won't recognize it. So these two things are really important. You could change the name of these. You don't have to use, you, you can use aliases, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm just going to use the exact names that's inside these DLL files. And they're all in uh, user 32 here. For this one, it takes in a few more um, arguments. It takes in a few more. Uh, so you, so if I was to show you um, some uh, documentation over here, uh, which is here, so if you go into um, if you go into uh, the the, the uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft website and, and search for mouse event, uh, you'll see that these are the arguments that this thing takes, and we need to um, write this signature as we see here. It doesn't return anything, so we don't have. To, there's no return type, and then the, all the documentation about it's here, so you can read kind of the details on how to do things. Uh, for me, though, uh, I'll just tell you what I shove into these locations here. So it's for the first one. It's my val uh, double word flags. So this is the actual. That's this one's the actual. Um, um, values that represent some kind of click where it's, uh, you know a down left down press or something like that 
This one here, um, uh, this next one is dx. This is this can give us like relative. You can move it to relative positions from where your mouse was. So so um, change in y and change in x there. This one, uh, uh, and then the next input is uh, it's basically uh, I don't use, but you can uh, we can have a read as to what it is. And the last one is something that I don't use either, but it's based pretty much extra information that you can uh, ex extract from it by the looks of it. But we can read the documentation on it. So if you go into the documentation, you can actually read about what exactly these things are. Um, right over here and over here, right? But that's not. But that's okay. All right. So now let's let's simulate a click. Let's simulate a click. So we could simulate a click by um, using. I'll just turn these off. Oh well, I can turn this one off mainly. This is the one that will interrupt things. Uh, we can use mouse event here. So so mouse event has a bunch of things you could do. If you look at the documentation, I'll just have a look at our time. Ooh. If you have a look at the documentation here. Um, you can have a left down and that's the hex for it. So we'll go we'll use left down and left up So we use hex two and four to simulate a click and if you want to do a right they're the numbers So I'll show you how to do that and you can do the rest. So what we we'll do is we'll go public const um, I'll just copy this mouse left down equals to to do hex in visual basics. It's eight like so, and um, it's hex O2 for down, and for up, public const, it's hex 4. So you can ignore any, any preceding zeros, but don't ignore the um, zeros after the number though. That's four, and now we can simulate a click. So what I could do is I could um, do a click. So how would I how would I do a click? Well, how, so uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I could demonstrate a click. So um, we will use mouse event. I'll just grab that all of that. So to simulate a click, to simulate a drag, you would just do this. But to simulate a click, I will just chuck zeros in all of these other places. Uh, one more and and then we'll need to register an up press and that would simulate a click so these two events would simulate a click there here you've got a um, it should be a sub there's no there's no um, return type here go dim I give them count equals zero and every time we click we'll just increase this count by one and we'll just display it on a corner right, let's try that so it should do it twice right I click once it does it oh, there you go so it, it, it's clicking away there uh, what I'll do is over here is I just want to do a bit of a sleep so after I click the button I want it to sleep a bit so we'll go system dot threading dot sleep. Let's sleep for half a second. System dot threading dot sleep. Thread. So thread dot sleep. And um, after we and yeah, so we'll wait a bit and then we will do another click. How, how's that? So we do one click. We wait. Do another click. One click. Wait. There you go. Oh beautiful so it is working so you just keep clicking away because every time I click it then it registers an hour click which then registers an hour click then which which registers an hour click and that's how we can do delays so you can 
delay your down and then delay a bit before you lift up and so we, that's how we can write a bit of a delay there for ourselves okay so that's how you pretty much uh, use um, a control of the click so you can reposition it get where you get where you're at and then um, deter do a click so down up if you if you only have down it'll do a drag all right and that's pretty much it and I'll see you in the next video